Finally, we've built up to this moment. The $100 spring roll location is behind us. Even like the most luxurious spring roll in the world, how much would you pay for it? Maybe $200. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Vietnam is famous for its diverse, affordable street food. This is 35,000 dong. Less than $2 for this. I mean, come on. Street food that's found its way to restaurants on every corner of the globe. Mm. That is outstanding. Among the country's most well-known offerings, the Vietnamese banh mi sandwich. When I grab a couple banh mi's and a coffee, and I'm good to go for the rest of the day, <clears throat> until, you know, 10 a.m. And those steamy, noodly bowls of pho. Mmm, that's really good. But today, we're taking on Vietnam's famous spring roll. This is a very good option for street food because it's a great combination of, like, vegetable and meat. Finding out what happens when local chefs elevate this classic dish to its highest potential. I can make a hundred thousand dollar spring roll if I want to, just drop some diamonds on it. <laughs> Me and my trusty Vietnamese sidekick, Lau, will try out three very different spring roll experiences at three different prices. Finish it with a spring roll set coming in at a whopping $100. So roll up your own fatty and enjoy as we take on luxurious spring rolls in Vietnam. Today, I've invited Lam to be my eating partner. During our last trip to Vietnam's Mekong Delta, Lam suffered through coconut worms mm. and something he's never had before. Oh wait, no, no, no. Rat meat. Luckily, these rats are so huge, so there's a lot of meat on there. See, you don't want to have like a super bony experience, you know? Well, let's see. After surviving the Mekong Delta in stride, Long home. I wanted to reward Lam with a food experience that's all pleasure and no pain, at least. That was my intention. <laughs> We're here. Ma'am, thank you so much for letting us bother you for a little bit. The shop name is In Kua. That first word is your name. Kua means crab. Where does the spring roll come in? So initially, she sold only crab. But later on, she started a second business, which is uh, selling spring roll. Goi Kun is all about the combination between roll and sauce. Together, they elevate the yum factors to levels previously unimagined. The roll must include rice paper of some sort, usually thin and round. Inside, the filling. Vegetables, herbs, meat or seafood. Then, the dipping sauce. Sweet, sour, salty, spicy, or even smelly. Sometimes all at the same time. This is the binding agent, creating the right balance of flavors. Here at Yen Kua, the dipping sauce is gold. That's why people keep coming back. Here's the point, Lum. Today is kind of a love letter to our friendship. Mm, wow. Recently, we were in the Mekong Delta. You ate coconut worm, rat meat. Thinking of eating those animals again. <laughs> Oh my god, no. <laughs> exactly. When I got the opportunity to try out this $100 spring roll, I was like, I'm gonna bring Lam. Today is just all about enjoying some good damn food. Yen Kua sells over 1,500 rolls per day. Here, she's selling four different types of rolls. The classic with shrimp and pork, a pig ear roll, a pig skin roll, and a Chinese sausage and fried egg roll. Today, I've got my eye on her best seller, starting at only 30 cents per roll. The classic and the piggy. Right here, 7,000 a piece. So simple, so yummy looking. The classic spring roll is made with a rice paper shell, lettuce, some herbs, bean sprouts, boiled shrimp, boiled pork belly, and a piece of chive. Next, the dipping sauce, black peanut sauce, peanut, coconut milk, ground mung bean, fried onion, and chili flakes. You ready? Yep. One, two, three. It's sweet, it's sour, it's tangy. There's some a little bit of spice to it, and then wonderful texture of fried onions on there too. Good. Oh. The one that I've never seen before is your favorite one, mm -hmm. which is pig ear roll. It has a pig ear. The pig ear roll is made basically the same way. Same wrap, same herbs, but with pig ear as the main protein. Okay, take a look at this. Inside, you can see some of the hard cartilage and some of this really fatty gelatinous part of the ear. This is a fermented fish sauce. The sauce will rock your socks off. Made from pungent fermented fish sauce, coconut water, and pineapple. But to give it a dip, just crunchy ear cartilage. So you're not really even tasting so much porkiness. It's just all about that texture. It's got some extra crunch to it. This one's very delicious. From here, we're gonna head to a location where they're making kind of a mid-priced spring roll, something maybe around $50. And then after that, the $100 spring roll. Right now, we gotta finish these spring rolls.
cool. So we're just going to keep sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our second destination, hidden inside the famous old market of Saigon, the other place. Not just any other place, but the other place. Vicky. Hi. How you doing? Nervous, but good, yes. Yeah. Don't be nervous. Look at us. We're just chilling out. We're sitting on someone else's bikes. It's very <laughs> casual Vietnamese. and normal and Vietnamese. Meet Vicky, the other place owner. Along with her team, they're on a mission to put a modern twist on traditional ingredients and recipes. A mission we'll see come to light today. Not so long ago, our producer reached out to you and told you about this expensive spring roll idea, seeing if we could, you know, elevate the spring roll to its highest potential. When you first heard about this, what were you thinking? I think that was like the hottest challenge ever. Ever. But it actually gives the bakun the spotlight it's deserved. How many rolls will we be trying today? We're doing six rolls. Six rolls? Yes. Yeah. My friend, at max, he can accommodate four rolls. Yeah. But you could eat. That's weak. Even the smallest lady can do like six. But after listening to her introduction about the six rolls, I think I can handle more. You think you can do it? Yes. Today, I'll be taking on a luxurious six-course meal journey served up by the head chef himself, Mr. Sun, starting from the north of Vietnam, making our way through the central region, then back here to southern Vietnam. The price of admission, $20 for six rolls. Round one, roll one. Repping northern Vietnam, known as Pho Cun. It starts with a layer of rice paper on top of the fall rice sheet. Then coriander, chive, mango, stir-fried beef, basil, and chili sauce. On the side, a sauce made with luxurious truffle, beef demi-glace, and a touch of peanut sauce. Clean, wonderful texture, rich beef, oh, very nice. Here is the truffle. Mmm, it tastes elegant, fantastic. The pork head cheese roll. This one is all about the head meat. Prep started early in the day, marinating the pig head skin, tongue, and ears with salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and more for 12 hours. When the meat's ready, he rolls it and serves it with a sweet and sour fish sauce. A little bit chewy. The herbs in here though, so fresh. Like the meat is rich and oily, mm. kind of fatty, but with the herbs and some sweetness from the sauce, it balances out perfectly. Balance. Love it. Now we're in central Vietnam. Course three, the grilled pork sausage roll, using ingredients like this and this and this, uh, or maybe not this, but the highlight here is the pate sauce. This one is from the mountain, mm -hmm. so they have this sauce with pate, the pate sauce. For our version, actually we use foie gras and a bit of chili oil. So this is a kind of a liquefied foie gras. Ooh. All right, it looks rich, it looks beautiful. Round three, let's go for it. All right. My God, it took me on a journey. The texture of the sausage and then that star fruit has like a wonderful, delicious styrofoam. This sauce is to die for. It's just coating the whole thing. It's so fatty. Yeah, I agree. Course four, cha su spring roll. Besides the cha su, he puts an entire Vietnamese pancake known as a bon sale inside the roll and serves it with tamarind sauce. Oh, it smells good. Mom. Mm. That pancake is so thin, you hardly even realize there's a pancake in there. Wonderful. Course five. Now we're moving down to the south. The classic spring roll. In contrast to Yen Kua, he uses a prawn bisque sauce made from prawn shell, coconut milk, peanut butter, and pork jus. Let's try it out. Is there a cucumber in there? What is that? <laughs> is that you, Leo? I don't have you, Leo, but you do. <laughs> Perfect. And now, the finale. Taking inspiration from the famous Italian stuffed and rolled meat known as porchetta. It's roasted for five hours until it achieves a golden brown level of crispiness. All this work to simply slice off a small, bite-sized piece, set it nicely atop a rice cake, and wrap it up. All right, this is the very kind of stinky fish sauce. Let's go right. for it. Some parts are crunchy, some is chewy. When eating banh hoi with the tail wire roasted pork, we dip inside the soy sauce. Oh. But this is the first time that I try fermented fish sauce. Mm. But it, it goes really well. If people watch this video, if they say, I demand to have this experience, is this something that you're willing to put on the menu? As you know, the whole thing is from a pig and we want to make it fresh. So like, we're going to put it on the menu as like something that you order like for three days ahead. Well done. Thank you. To you and like, the whole team. Awesome experience, for real. In Ho Chi Minh City, we've already experienced the $100 banh mi. Oh my god. And I even slurped down some $100 far. 
Those noodles are fantastic. But now the spotlight is on the spring roll, presented on a stage known as Cao Ba Quan. Wow, look at this speedboat. It's really fast. Is that an Olympic sport? Is he no. practicing? No, we don't. Finally, we've built up to this moment. The $100 spring roll location is behind us. It's called Cao Ba Quan. Is that right? Actually, the, the first time is better. Oh, sh <laughs> <laughs> We're about to hang out with Nikki, professional chef, restaurateur, and creator of the $100 spring roll. I want you to guess, like, what ingredients would she have to put in there to make it worth $100? That ties up meat, like Kobe beef or something, I guess. That's a good guess. So she's got to put something more expensive in there. Maybe gold? Really? I don't know. I don't know. Either. A diamond? Jennifer Aniston's eyelash? <laughs> Meet Nikki, owner of Kaba Kwan Restaurant. You guys remember her Viagra oysters, right? What kind of oysters are these? These are Viagra. Okay, does it really work? Oh, you have to try it. <laughs> now she's back, pushing past her comfort zone and taking on the $100 spring roll challenge. Nikki, when we asked you, could you make a $100 spring roll, what was your first thought? I thought it was cool, I thought it was uh, easy. The most important thing is to keep the treat of the spring rolls, which is you have to make the dipping sauce taste good. Mm. You can't just put expensive ingredients and call it a $100 spring roll. If this is a big hit, people want to order the $100 spring roll later. Is it something you would put on the menu? I'll be more than happy to do that. All right, I'm pumped. We're both excited to try it out. Let's get to it. On the menu today, surf and turf, a combination of beef and seafood served separately in two kinds of spring rolls for a price of $100. First, a spring roll with a Japanese twist using high quality Kobe beef for its protein. She starts off by torching the sacred beef. On the rice paper, she adds the super sweet and sour ground cherries, a rare ingredient you can't find easily around here. Then the Kobe beef, some herbs, and she wraps it up. But that's only half the dish. What about this sauce? The main ingredient in the sauce, solid seared slices of foie gras. This is high-end fatty goose liver. But she adds a twist. She douses this prized ingredient in some common Vietnamese fermented fish sauce. Then some coriander, kumquat, and black pepper. Lam. Yes? I'm not sure that you've had many of these ingredients in your life. And now you're going to mix many of them together for the first time. It's going to blow your socks off. Are you wearing socks? I do. This is foie gras, a fatty goose liver. It's gone through a special process that's made it bigger than normal. It's kind of a mean process. They kind of like shove a funnel down their throat. But we don't usually talk about that part when we eat, you know, us um, fancy people right now. We just go, ooh, foie gras. Very nice. Less French. Oui, oui. You ready? That's fantastic. Really fatty. Melts in your mouth. So you can see, super thick. It's full of whatever I said in the voiceover earlier. That's quite delicious. That has an incredible depth of flavor. Super rich, huh? This fruit is quite tangy. It has a lot of sourness to it. I thought it would be too much tang. I like the great combination of like the savory flavor from the beef and then uh, the juicy from the fruit. It's great combination. Oh, wow, look at this. It's kind of turning liquidy pretty quick. I'm gonna put a huge piece of foie gras in here. You can see the sear on there. It looks awesome. There's so many layers of flavor. There's so much happening at once. My God, she did it. There she is right there. <laughs> we had our land animal. Now it's time for a taste from the sea using Japanese Hokkaido scallops. The scallop is cut into thin slices and half of it is stir fried. On the rice paper, she adds slices of dragon fruit, then the scallop, raw and stir fried, a smear of homemade hot sauce, herbs, and a mound of red caviar. I mean, seriously, have you ever seen a spring roll that looks like this? Now the dipping sauce. Seafood meets seafood as she concocts this one-of-a-kind sauce using sea urchins and black caviar. A pinch of Himalayan black salt, a slice of yellow melon and its juice, passion fruit sauce, and her homemade hot sauce. This is a sea urchin. It's like the egg from a sea urchin. Some of them have eggs and they look like these, these little egg pods. You're gonna try just the uni and I wanna see your face. You're looking at me like it's a rat meat. It's not the rat meat anymore. Is it raw? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
You don't like it? No, it tastes different. Something that I haven't tried before. But I do like the beginning taste. It's like really creamy and salty. By the way, I like that we're on the street eating $100 oh, yeah. of food. That's a new concept. The next one, right here. You can see there is a load of caviar in here, pink caviar. Shall we cut it in half? I feel guilty if I cannot finish the whole thing. But that's not what like fancy people do. We're fancy. We so, can't finish it. We just like feed it to a pet or something. It's no big deal. Let me see it again. All right. <laughs> Oh, she did not agree with that. All right, so here we go. A little urchin, a little caviar. <laughs> it's so fun watching you try food you've never tried before. For me, I love it. It's a whole different take. This one's all about the seafood. This kind of creamy, oceanic goodness. I'm impressed. Very different. Super new. Something that no one's ever done with a spring roll before. But I think she murdered it. I think she killed it. Well, time will tell if this is going to be a huge hit. I liked it, and I'm super glad I could share it with you. My dude? Yeah, my Boom. pleasure, and always. Awesome. Vietnamese cuisine is some of the most versatile in the world. World-class food that's fit for a five-star experience, just as well as street-side dining. Bro! If I eat one more spring roll, I'm gonna absolutely explode. Today, we wanted to explore spring rolls in their entirety for you, Lam. Which one to you was was the best value? Without a second of thinking, I would definitely say the other place. Oh, really? Yes. For me, the best value is the street spring roll. I mean, 7,000 dong, yeah. you can get like three of them for a dollar. Mm. That's it, guys. And then we do a break or something. Just like a music break or something. And we come back. And be sure to check out our second channel, more best ever food review show for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show. Laum. Thank you for joining me. Laum is a great dude. If you find yourself in Vietnam <laughs> or the city of Saigon, I'm gonna put his information in the description box so you can try to contact him and have him be your tour guide next time you're in the city. How do I usually end the video? But Good night. A, a piece or something. A, a piece. piece. Ah, ah, <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. See you next time. A, a piece. piece. Oh, done. Yeah.